how to build an email list in 2022. As a business owner, one of your most valuable assets is your email list. It's your ability to contact your list anytime you want from here into infinity. The thing is social media, it's great to have a bunch of followers, subscribers, but the thing is that's rented space. So the platform could disappear in a couple of years or your account could be hacked, deleted. There's a bunch of things that could go wrong that would get in the way of you reaching your audience. If you have an email list, you can contact them today, tomorrow, or any day in the future. You can have that list saved on your computer. You can use an email marketing software such as ConvertKit or MailChimp. This is your list and you can take it with you wherever you go. Before we dig into how to build your list, let's go through a couple of additional benefits. So the deliverability, actually being able to reach your audience. So with Instagram, let's say you post something today on reels, a story, post, whatever it happens to be, maybe you're lucky if you reach 10% of your audience. So if you have a thousand followers, reaching a hundred of them would be a good post. With email, we see 20, 30, 40% open rate. So 40% of the audience actually open the email a much higher percent actually have to see the subject line and the fact that you sent them an email. So the fact that people realizing you're sending them content, you're having probably over half or even more of your audience seeing at least that you sent that email and having a pretty high percent of people opening the email and seeing the actual content. So the next benefit is segmentation. So the ability to segment a particular audience, talk to them in a particular way. So this could be for experts, for beginners, someone that just got to know you today for your best customers. There's tons of different ways to kind of cut up your different audience and speak to people differently. So it could be someone signs up for an email sequence today. They get email one today, two tomorrow, three the next day. Someone else can sign up for that six months from now, or people have signed up for that months in the past. And they went through that entire sequence. You can't post something on social media saying, Hey, if you're one of our best customers, here's a discount for you, but you can segment that audience, send them a particular message that only they're going to see they're gonna get that in their inbox and no one else is gonna have access to it. So now let's get on to actually building our email list. So there's three things that you need to build an email list. One, you need to give something away. So if you just say, hey, I have the best email list in the entire world, sign up. Probably not a lot of people are gonna sign up. I have way too many emails and I know I have thousands of emails I haven't even opened yet. So, and I think a lot of other people are the same way. They don't want one additional email, but if you're gonna give something away of value, people are willing to exchange their email for something right now. So if you have a guide, checklist, masterclass, webinar, we're gonna talk about this in much more detail in a second, but you wanna give something away of value in exchange for getting their email. The second part is where you're gonna collect their email address. So landing pages and forms, you need the actual mechanics of explaining what you're gonna be giving away and for them to give their email address and for all that stuff to happen. So you need landing pages, you need forms on your website and an email marketing software. And the third thing you need is some form of traffic. So people are doing all sorts of things on the internet at any given time. How are you gonna get their attention and get them to your landing page or your form to sign up? Now we're gonna get into each of these in more detail. Also, if you want more information about anything we talk about today, check out the description below. Also, we're gonna go through this stuff fairly quickly. If you want me to go into more detail on any given topic, let me know down below in the comment section. So now let's go through the three parts in more detail. The first of which, what are you gonna give away? So there's a ton of options here and we'll go through each one briefly. So it could be a guide, so maybe a five to 25 page summary of whatever it is that you do. So for us, it could be our Instagram guide, our Facebook ads guide. If you teach yoga, it could be a guide to all the different yoga postures. So the next thing is a checklist. So this could be the 25 things you need before launching your podcast. The next option is a webinar. So webinars are a phenomenal tool where you kind of teach for an hour. So maybe 45 minutes of teaching, 10 minutes of selling, and maybe five minutes for questions at the end where you can take someone who didn't know you before, signs up for your webinar, has an hour long kind of interaction, live event with you, and ends up purchasing at the end of the event. So what we see in general, something live has a higher perceived value than something recorded. So a live webinar versus a video recording the kind of live training is more valuable to people. The video is probably more valuable than something is written, but it really depends on what it is you're doing and what could be really, really valuable for someone. So the next option is a live event, which is similar to the webinar, but kind of extended. So for example, we're in the process of taking James Wedmore's course, Business by Design, and to launch the course, he essentially had three different live trainings. So I think it was Thursday and then Tuesday and then the following Thursday, and then you could purchase his course, but this was an even longer kind of educational period where everyone had a ton of time of like 10 days to watch three different trainings and then find out about his offer. And so the thing is with this, sure, this was created to sell something, 
but but we as a business came across this course through the launch of the training to sell a course. So having some type of live event can be a great way to grow your email list and to sell at the same time. Very similar to a webinar, just kind of longer form. The next option could be a challenge. So this could be a two day, five day, seven, 12, whatever. However many day challenge to basically take someone from point A to point B. And then with kind of something paid with you could go from point B to Z, let's say. So a example of this could be, there's like a smoothie challenge that I think, um, green smoothies, I forget what the name of it is. Also, Pat Flynn has an, uh, your first hundred email challenge. So how can you, so how can you gather your first hundred emails? So this is something that's just over two or three days, I think, to take someone from having no email list to a hundred emails. And then he has an email course that he could sell. Also, he does affiliate marketing with one of the same email marketing softwares that we use, ConvertKit. So you can kind of think through what is what is something where you can really challenge and push people over a period of days to get started with something. And then the kind of the next steps would be something paid with you. Then there's a conference. This could be online or in person, basically having a bunch of different speakers over a day or a couple of days. The fact that you're organizing the event and you have other people that are gonna be there, they're gonna to promote to their audiences, hey, there's this conference, maybe you wanna sign up. And there could be more perceived value, the fact that you have not just your knowledge that's being shared in a live event, but multiple people's knowledge being shared in a conference. Then something a little bit easier is a recorded training. So this is similar to our YouTube masterclass, it's something that someone could sign up for today, they could watch it tomorrow, they can pause it and you know watch it in a couple of different sittings, they can rewind it. So this is different than a live training, it may not be seen as quite as high perceived value, the fact that it's you know kind of recorded and maybe it was recorded a few months ago, but this is a great way for you to have something that people consume at their own leisure. They can sign up whenever they want and it's just there for them when they're ready for it. Then you have the email course. So this could be something delivered over a period of days. And the thing is with an email course, so we have one for personal branding where you get an email every day for seven days. So the great thing with this, it doesn't require any design, doesn't require any video recording, video editing, all you need to do is write seven emails and just set that up within your email marketing software. It's super easy to do within ConvertKit, for example. And so this is one of the ones where you can kind of be delivering content over a period of time. Someone has a week's worth of your content, you know, one email per day. And so it's a great way to educate and also build trust by delivering something to their inbox every day for the first week. A really popular option for e-commerce companies are discounts for your first purchase. So you see pop-ups all the time on e-commerce companies' websites where they say, hey, in exchange for your email, maybe your email and your phone number will give you five, 10, 20% off your first purchase. This is really, really powerful and works. The only issue here, and just be careful of, is you're introducing yourself the first purchase. You're saying, hey, you know, nice to meet you. I'm a discount brand. So you're giving someone a discount on their first purchase. They may expect discounts for their second, fifth, and 50th purchase as well. So a brand like Banana Republic, I see 40% discounts all the time. So there's no reason why I would buy anything from a brand like that at 100% of the normal price. I'm always going to wait for a discount. If you have a software company, free trials are a phenomenal way to go. So if you give a free trial for a couple of days or a couple of weeks, it allows someone to try it before they buy it and you have their contact information. So they're much more likely to buy if they tried it first. Also, you have their contact information to stay in touch with them and hopefully convince them to purchase your software. Another thing that we've been doing lately is not necessarily giving something away for free, but having low cost options. So they sometimes call them tripwires or mini offers. So this is something that could be $7, $27, I would say in general, less than $50, where you have something lower cost to kind of get someone introduced to your product or service. So this is a great way to have someone, so you attract an audience that is willing to take out their wallet and spend money within the first couple of interactions with you. And if they like what they see, they're much more likely to want to purchase something more premium later on. But the thing is, you're not going to get quite as many emails because you're requiring someone to spend a few dollars before you're capturing their contact information versus in the previous examples, you're giving it away something for free first, and then you know following up later to be able to convince them to make a purchase. The second part is kind of the mechanics of everything. The first thing you want to do is add forms to your website. So this could be in the footer, the homepage, the about us page and on your blog. There's different types of forms and they're really easy to do with ConvertKit. So you have inline forms. So as you're reading through the content, you'll see the form kind of within the text. The next type are pop-ups. So pop-ups could appear right when someone lands on the page after a certain amount of time, or it could be an accident and pop-up. So if someone kind of mouses up as if they're gonna close the tab, then the pop-up appears then. 
Another option could be the uh, pop-in form. So this is a little bit different. It co doesn't cover the entire screen. It just kind of comes in in the very corner of the screen. This is a less intrusive way to have your form appear. I see HubSpot do this all the time. So you're reading the article. They don't want to interrupt the flow of your reading, but you kind of see in the corner of your eye a form come up that usually has to do with whatever you're reading. So you're reading an article about YouTube, and then you see in the corner, you're like, hey, we have this YouTube training if you want to sign up for our email list. Now let's move on to landing pages. Landing pages will have higher conversions than a form on your website because it's a website with one single conversion where it's entirely focused on getting someone to sign up. Where a form on your website, they could click on the about us, the blog, your social media links. They could send you an email. There's a bunch of things people could do. It's much more, there's a lot more distractions on your website versus a landing page. So the three softwares I talked about earlier, so ConvertKit, MailChimp, System.io, all have landing page software. ConvertKits is kind of simple though. You can't customize it all that much. So we'll only use it for warm traffic. So someone may be watching one of our YouTube videos, send them to a ConvertKit landing page to sign up. Otherwise we end up using lead pages, a paid software just for landing pages. But I would say MailChimp and System.io have uh, more powerful landing page builders. So here's an example of a landing page for our YouTube masterclass. Here's something I came across for Russell Brunson term, in terms of a landing page. So if you're doing something with paid traffic, if you want to convince someone to sign up for a freebie and then maybe have something you're selling them afterwards, you may want to include a video, have, you know, go through the benefits, really tell a story why whatever it is that you're offering is going to help them with whatever it is that they're looking to improve in their life. Part three, generating traffic. So you could have an amazing landing page, a freebie that's just super useful. But the thing is, if no one ever gets to the landing page to find out about it, then what was all that work for? So you want to think through how am I going to generate traffic? get people day in and day out to see the offer that I have, that I'm giving something away amazing for free in exchange for their email. The first option, one of our favorite options is YouTube. So YouTube is phenomenal because you create content and today, tomorrow, six weeks, six months, maybe even six years from now, someone could come across the video and some percent of the people watching it will, will see that you have something to offer. They'll go down to the description, click on it, go to the landing page and sign up giving you their email address. The second option is social media. So this could be Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, each one has their own pros and cons. A con for all of them though, is your post isn't gonna live all that long. So you're gonna to have to create content consistently to get in front of your followers as well as a new audience to get people to sign up for your email list. So Twitter or Facebook, it's easy to add a link in your post. So you post something on either of those platforms, you can send someone to your landing page or to your blog or somewhere where they can sign up. With Instagram or with TikTok, you're gonna have just the link in your bio. So you have to create a post create a video and draw people's attention to, hey, if you wanna get this guide or you wanna see this training, you know, go to the link in my bio. Option three, paid ads. So this could be Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, TikTok, all of them have ad platforms and they're really powerful in terms of targeting your ideal audience. The thing is you're gonna be paying for each one of the impressions. So instead of creating a video once on YouTube and having that show for, you know, time way into the future, you're gonna pay each time you show your ad to somebody. So if you're running ads, you wanna make sure you have the entire kind of funnel built out. You know, it's gonna cost this much to reach people, this much per click, this much per sign up. And if I get a hundred signups, that's gonna generate say three sales and whatever those sales generate is more than I spent on ads. So if you have all that built out, ads are a super powerful tool that can allow you to grow your audience and grow your business really quickly. Pinterest is also a phenomenal tool to grow your business. So it's just for specific niches. So maybe for B2B or certain other businesses, maybe there isn't a huge, huge huge audience on Pinterest, but you can create pins. And the thing is with pins is they have a long life, almost like a YouTube video, maybe not years later, but for weeks or months later, you create a pin on Pinterest and it's going to show up in search results, show up in people's feeds. So Pinterest is something that's kind of overlooked in a lot of cases, but we've had a ton of success creating content on Pinterest. So you could create pins that would send people to landing pages as well as send people to a blog, a blog article that would have a form to get people to sign up. So you can grow your email list through generating traffic from Pinterest. SEO can be a tremendous source of traffic, but it isn't the easiest of the sources we talked about. The thing is to rank in Google search results takes a lot of effort and a lot of time. So it's much more competitive to rank in Google search results than say rank in YouTube search results. So you could create a video on the same topic Ranking YouTube search results, get video views day in and day out. But to rank in Google, you're gonna have to create great content, you're gonna have to have backlinks, and you're gonna have to wait. So if you do succeed ranking Google search results, you're on the first page of Google for certain key terms for your business, it can be a fire hose of traffic. Just know it's gonna be a lot of effort and time to get you there. 
Through creative partnerships, you can also grow your email list and grow your business. So for example, with Business by Design and James Wedmore, I hadn't heard of either of them until they did their launch for the three days training that I mentioned earlier, where someone else that I follow on YouTube, I was part of their email list, sent out a promotion email for the three days of training. So I'm sure it was through an affiliate program where he earned a commission by promoting James Wedmore's three days of training. But that's where I found out about James, signed up for the three-day training, and later purchased the course. So there's definitely people out there, businesses out there that have your ideal audience as their followers, as their email subscribers. So if you get in touch with the right people that have the right audience, there's probably some way that you can form some type of partnership opportunity where it can be win-win for you and the other business. You can definitely grow an email list with podcasts. So this could be your podcast, so you have a podcast and in each episode, you kind of promote yourself. So you have your own ad on your podcast where you say, hey, if you want our productivity guide, go to jeffdalen.com slash productivity. We have a great guide that allow you to get more done every single day, every single week and reach your goals, let's say. So I could say that in every single podcast episode. Also, I could do something similar if I go on to other people's podcasts. So if I'm on someone else's podcast, there's always a section where someone says, hey, and how can someone stay in touch with you if they'd like? You're like, actually, I prepared something just for your audience. If they go to jeffthalen.com slash Joe Rogan, you know, you can get this, this, and that if you go there. So if you're either on your podcast, you can promote something. If you're on other people's podcasts, think about something that you can put together that'd be really valuable for their audience. In both cases, you're, you know, on a podcast promoting something where people are going there and signing up for your email list. So if you made it this far, hopefully you're ready to start growing your email list. There's a bunch of tools down below in the description. And if you want to see some of our tutorial videos on ConvertKit, MailChimp, landing pages, automated email sequences, definitely check out the playlist right here. Hope to see you in those and future videos. Bye-bye.